the Vurunga volcanoes. Eight of them straddle the border between Rwanda, Congo, and Uganda. These volcanoes are a home of the mountain gorilla. When my wife Kay and I came to the Vurunga volcanoes, in 1959 to study the animals. We moved to the Congo side and had an idyllic year living in the forest with the gorillas. Daily I tracked them, learned about their habits, learned about their society, and it was an absolutely lovely experience because one gets so emotionally involved. The animals became used to my presence and I could sit at the edge of their group. And it was almost like visiting family every day. So now I'm back sitting on the Rwanda side, in fact, exactly after 50 years since we began the study. And I am tremendously delighted that the United Nations Environmental Program and other organizations have designated 2009 as the Year of the Gorilla. The mountain gorilla is threatened because it lives in an island of habitat, maybe 400 animals, surrounded by a sea of people. But the mountain gorilla is only one animal that should be our basic concern. There are also the lowland gorillas, there are two kinds of chimpanzees, and there's the orangutan. They all deserve our attention and help. Over the past half century, there have been many scientific studies of these mountain gorillas. They've been very important in telling us about the ecology of the animal, their social interactions on a long-term basis. But to get this information out to the public, it is essential to have good films that reach the public so they can see how beautiful these animals are in their glossy black coats. You know, sitting with gorillas day after day, one really wants to go up and hug them. So films like one I participated in in 1991, the IMAX film, have a tremendous impact on the public. The Congo side of the Runga volcanoes is at present in turmoil, but the Rwanda side in the past few years has done a tremendous job of taking care of its gorillas. They've got excellent guides who know all the gorillas individually, which is essential because by monitoring individuals, we know what is happening to them. They have trackers that keep track each day of where the animals are going. They have a very active guard force who are so dedicated, sometimes they are killed in the line of duty. If you look at the habitat, fields of potatoes and maize and others go right to the edge of the park border. So the gorillas really have no place else to go. In the late 50s, the Belgian government cut out a piece of the park here in Rwanda and turned it into agriculture. And then in the late 60s, in a hugely misguided idea, the European Union, or its precursor, gave 10,500 hectares over to pyrethrum plantations, cutting a third out of the national park in Rwanda. Mm. 
this has harmed the gorillas tremendously since it reduced a lot of their habitat. So now what do we do? Rwanda has been excellent in promoting tourism. Last year, in 2008, over 17,000 tourists paid good sums just to see gorillas. Give you an idea how important gorillas are to the world. People recognize them as our, one of our nearest relatives. Rwanda earned eight and a half million dollars last year just from its gorillas alone the number one foreign exchange earner. However, the population of Rwanda is increasing at 3.2% a year. Where will all these people go? There is no extra land. Household plots of land are shrinking year by year, which essentially means if the world cares enough about the gorillas. It has to help these animals endure by helping the local people. Without the involvement and participation of communities, the gorillas have little chance of long-term survival. And that means you have to have their moral participation and we have to help them economically. These mountains are a watershed for the fields below. Hundreds and thousands of people depend on the water that is maintained in the mountains and released slowly for their fields. If you cut the forest, the gorillas lose their home, but the people will also lose their continuous water supply throughout the year. So, by protecting those forests, people are protecting themselves, but they're protecting something for the world to enjoy, a world treasure, a world natural heritage. So they have to be compensated for protecting this. Anybody that goes up into those mountains and quietly sits and looks into the brown eyes of a gorilla looking placidly back at you will be forever converted to helping them.